This week, we're back in coastal British Columbia. Last week, Steve's Outdoor Adventures client, Alvin Moore, filled his tag on a trophy black bear. Now Steve, along with his friend, Phil Phillips, are coming to the exciting conclusion of a 10-day bear hunt and the closing days of Steve's quest to take the muzzleloader world record grizzly. This week's episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures begins now. Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by Burris Optics, Stormcloth 2, Performance Thermal Outerwear, the new Corbon T DPX Ammunition, the new Presser 360 Trail Camera, Kershaw Knives, CDA Muzzle Loaders, it's just a better gun, and UDAP Bear Pepper Spray. Last week, my good friend and client, Alvin Moore scored on an awesome black bear. Now it was gonna be my turn to focus my attention on filling my tags. Most notably and important was the grizzly bear tag that was burning a hole in my pocket. I had booked my personal hunt here for two reasons. First, it was gonna be an awesome hunt for black bears. There's no other place like this for numbers and size. And second, this area is well known for big coastal grizzlies that regularly make the Boone and Crockett record book. And I really thought that I had a chance to break the long-standing muzzleloader world record with my CVA muzzleloader. Besides Steve, good friend Phil Phillips also had two black bear tags and was eagerly awaiting his chance to make a stock on a coastal black bear. But as good friends often do, Phil decided to wait and help Steve fill his grizzly tag. Outfitter Bob Milligan had decided to anchor the boat in a protected bay with a perfect view of a grassy beach and freshwater river. In this same bay, just one year to the day earlier, he had spotted two huge boars fighting on the beach. He returned here today with hopes of finding one of those big bears. Bob had just finished telling me a story about two bears that were fighting on this beach exactly one year earlier to the day. And it wasn't five minutes later that he spotted a big boar feeding along the tree line. One look in the spotting scope and we knew that he was a big bear. With light fading fast, we jumped into a skiff and started toward shore. Just on the boat back there. Bob spotted a grizzly in the back of the bay. It's a big one. Right before dark. Let's see if we can make a run at him. I just had to hope that we would have enough light and that the tide wouldn't force the bear into the trees before we could get set up. On this hunt, Steve is using his CVA Acura V2 50 caliber muzzle loader. Topped with a burst fast fire sight, the same gun and sight combo he used to take his massive Utah mountain lion. 
Only this time, he's loaded the gun with 150 grains of IMR white hot powder and is pushing a giant 405 grain power belt bullet. The perfect combination for big coastal grizzlies. Follow Steve's Outdoor Adventures on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with all the latest events and get live updates from the field. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures was sponsored by the new Burris Eliminator Laser Scope. Parts of the Steve's Outdoor Adventures television series are filmed on the Wild Game Innovations action cameras, a portable, high-definition video. Parts of Steve's Outdoor Adventures are filmed on Wild Game Innovations action cameras. Affordable, high definition, hunting video cameras. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures was sponsored by Bergara Barrels and Rifles. When we went to commercial break, outfitter Bob Milligan had spotted a big grizzly feeding along the tree line. He and Steve were in the skiff moving to shore quickly. The tide was ripping in quickly and covering all of the open ground with water. While this meant they could get the boat in closer, it also meant the big bear would soon run out of ground to feed on and move into the trees and the hunt would be done for the night. When we first got in there, we knew we had at best 30 minutes of light, but the incoming tide was my bigger concern. Bob quietly moved the boat to what we thought was within 100 yards of the bear along a downed tree. We got out and we got set up. Well, it turns out the bear was so big that what we thought was 100 yards was really almost 200 yards. With a muzzleloader and a grizzly that big, I wanted to be within 100 yards. Bob and I surveyed the layout and we came up with a plan. We would have to use the boat to cover 150 yards of open water between us and the bear. Our goal was to get to a down tree and root wad that was sticking out of the water. I gave us a snowball's chance in hell of pulling that boat stock off. I couldn't believe that we didn't make a sound or spook that bear off. He just kept his head down and focused on feeding. It really helped that he was stepping in a few inches of incoming tidal water, which probably also helped cover our sounds. But Bob was the hero here. He silently pulled us in the, into that root wad and within 50 yards of that big bear, undetected. Now, it was gonna be up to me.
That root wad was like a gift from God. It was a perfect bench rest to take my shot from. Everything was perfect, and then the unthinkable happened. I got a bad primer. It flashed back in my face, and the bear instantly looked right at me. I didn't know what was going to happen next, but my heart was beating out of my chest. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures was sponsored by the new Corbon T DPX Ammunition. I'm Chuck Mawinney. And I'm Ed Eaton. And you're watching Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Seen exclusively on the Outdoor Channel. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Steiner and the new Predator Extreme Binoculars. When we went to commercial break, Steve had closed the distance and was within 50 yards of a massive BC grizzly. When the unthinkable happened. So there I was, 49 yards from the biggest grizzly I would ever have a shot at, and I got a bad primer. And the bear was staring a hole right through me. I didn't dare move. Nobody moved. And I couldn't believe it. He went back to feeding. So I dug into my pocket and found a new primer. My goal was to line up the bear and wait for his near side leg to step forward, then shoot through the vitals and break the offside shoulder. The 405 grain power belt would have to do the rest. When you start to line up and take a shot at a grizzly bear using your muzzle loader, you have to remember that you only get one shot and that you had better make it count. Oh, Bob, that's a nice bear. All right, buddy. All right. That's what it's all about right there. <laughs> Woo, it's a big bear. Yes, we had done it. And I couldn't believe that the big bear dropped with one shot right in his tracks. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! That's what it's all about right there. Hey, let's look at the big one. Oh, God! Oh, oh yeah. Woo! With darkness upon us and the tide literally now covering the bear, we decided to use the skiffs to tow the bear across the river to some ground just above the high tide. The plan was to cover the bear up with life jackets and coats to keep other bears off of him at night and come back first thing in the morning to take photos and video. This was the perfect opportunity for me to use the new Wild Game Innovations HD action camera with infrared video capability. The next morning, Steve and Bob, along with buddy Phil Phillips, jumped into the jet boat to run up the shallow river and get a look at this big bear during daylight hours. Bob loves his jet boat. And with the tide out, it was the perfect opportunity for us to blast up the shallow river and pull right up next to the big bear.
here in coastal British Columbia. Another step in my quest for the North America Super Slam of big game animals. This is the coastal British Columbia grizzly. What an amazing hunt. We were out on the big boat right before dark last night. This bear came out right on the tree line, feeding in the grass. Bob checked him out real good in the spot and scope, decided he was worth a closer look. We were able to get within 60 yards of him using the boat. Bob was pulling us along real quietly, got out of the boat in some shallow water, crawled up into a big stump and root wad that was like a perfect bench rest for hunting. And uh, you know, the CVA muzzleloader right there. One shot, put him right down in the water. What an amazing hunt and a massive, massive grizzly. Closed captioning sponsored by Kershaw, the official knife sponsor of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by Burris Optics, Stormcloth 2, Performance Thermal Outerwear, the new Corbon T DPX Ammunition, the new Bresser 360 Trail Camera, Kershaw Knives, CVA Muzzle Loaders, it's just a better gun, and UDAP Bear Pepper Spray. If you'd like to book this hunt for yourself, give my office a call. The toll-free number and website address are listed at the bottom of the screen. And I'm always available to take your calls and answer your questions and personally help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. With Steve's grizzly tag filled and the pending world record on his way to the record books, the crew decided to head back to port where Steve and Phil would turn their attention to black bear hunting out of Bob's fancy new hunting lodge. One of the best things about coastal British Columbia is that you can access a lot of awesome bear country on old logging roads and Bob's lodge is conveniently located in the middle of the best black bear hunting. So we traded the Yukon bear for a nice lodge and the 14 foot Lund skiff for an F-350 and we started covering some country. This is a great omen for today. This is the Komodi bear, or the spirit bear. I've waited my whole life to find one of these bears. I've been to this particular region of British Columbia several times, never seen one. We're on our way out to the hunting area today. And there it is, the Komodi bear. Today's gonna be a great day to hunt. Over the course of our week in British Columbia, Alvin and Rich, they filled their black bear tags. Phil Phillips, he filled both of his tags. And I was even fortunate to take a big bear on my last night in country. But all of that is footage for another episode in the near future. After the mandatory 60 day drying period, my grizzly scored a whopping 26 and 1 16th inches Boone and Crockett, which easily eclipsed the long standing muzzleloader world record, which had scored 23 and 2 16th inches. I'd like to thank Bob Milligan for a great hunt and all that he did to help get me on that bear.
my clients and good friends, Rich Winkler, Alvin Moore, and Phil Phillips for letting us film their hunts and share a great week together out on the boat. And remember, if this is a hunt that you'd like to book for yourself, please give me a call. I will personally take your calls and answer your questions and help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please join us again next week for another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Steve had taken a grizzly for the ages and solidified his place in hunting history and taken another animal on his quest to complete the Super Slam of North America with his CVA muzzleloader. But he is far from done because tomorrow is another adventure. Going back down this road, we spotted some bears last night. It's a pretty good sign, a lot of bear activity here. We're gonna take Phil with the bow and his pants unzipped. Holy sweet mother of God. I got jeans on underneath. Oh. There's it. That just looks wrong, dude. I just above it anyway. You were above it. I just, I just above all that. I look, I, <laughs>